We'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Each prayer I pray, each step I take, I You know, with all the chemicals and all the processing and science that's going into the food today, so-called science, if you really look at the ingredients and the additives, you'll find that Folks are being embalmed before they're even dead. Literally, they are filling people with glue. That's what they're doing. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The Bible says if we give thanks, we pray and we believe God's word, that our food is sanctified by prayer in the word. Amen. So when you pray, giving God thanks for your meal, remember to pray honestly. Sincerely, not just as a form. Because if you don't, I remember one time I said this long prayer over my food and the Lord said, well, what was that for? And he, when he said that to me, he made me to understand the main purpose of praying over our meals is to give thanks. You'd be better off just saying thank you, Lord, before you eat than to go into a long, dragged-out prayer. And a lot of times I have found that folks will use that time to pray because they forgot to pray in the morning or didn't spend any time with the Lord in the morning, so they try to take that time when they're praying over their food. You can't catch up. You cannot catch up what you lose or what you miss in the beginning or first fruits of your day. You can't you can't make up for it. Are you listening? The Bible says they that seek the Lord early are going to be rewarded. They that seek diligently seek the Lord early. Even in the world, they say the early bird gets the worm, right? Amen. They say, they've got some saying, they say early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy and wise. And there's some truth to that. But listen, as I've been telling folks, you got to put Jesus first. You got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. And then all these things are added unto you. Don't go seeking to add things. Just make God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost first. Seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. Don't get the cart before the horse. 
Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to <clears throat> the book of Luke, chapter 8, and verse 14. Luke, chapter 8, and verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. He's not talking about the world. Amen. He's not talking about the world here. He's talking about those that are truly born again. They hear the word, they go forth, they're choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. He didn't say they didn't get saved. He said they didn't bring any fruit to perfection. Jesus talked about fruit that was brought to 30-fold and 60-fold. But he also mentioned fruit brought to 100-fold. Perfection. Just because you get saved doesn't mean you're going to produce a 100-fold harvest. I shared with you in previous message that that's how you bring the greatest honor and glory to God is by bringing in, by God producing out of your life a hundredfold harvest. There's nothing wrong, folks, with the seed. The good seed. There's nothing wrong with the seed. Now, there are different measures of seed, of the good word, the good seed of God's word. And it's going to produce some 30, some 60, and 100 fold. But there's nothing wrong with the seed. It's a matter of how much seed you have as to what you're going to produce or what your life is going to produce. God will only invest in you what you let him invest in you. And... The soil, the condition of your heart has a lot to do with what that seed is going to produce. Again, there's nothing wrong with the seed. God's word is powerful. And the word of God that goes out of his mouth is going to produce. But where that word goes makes the difference. Amen. Jesus said we have to have a good and an honest heart a good and an honest heart. But that which, or, or that on the good ground, are they which in an honest and a good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Are you listening? With patience. Turn with me to Luke, chapter 21, verse 34. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare, a trap, shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. The snare. It's going to come upon all the world. 
Watch ye therefore. You can't be sleeping if you're watching. Watch ye therefore. And pray sometimes. Pray always. That you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I believe with all my heart that the church today is hesitating. Are you listening? They're being ne neglectful. And they're hesitating. Taking our title for the message this afternoon, How Shall We Escape? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, for your word. We have your word. We have truth. We have the light. That we, Lord, might have understanding, comprehension, discernment in this hour that we might walk worthy of the calling upon our lives. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those that are listening, not just those that are listening and hearing the word, but they're obeying it. And not just hearers of the word, but they're doers of the word. We pray, Lord, that they will receive more understanding. They will gain understanding, enlightenment, to be illuminated. That they will be illuminated. Lord, that they will receive the revelation of your word from this message today. Pray that you bless and that you anoint as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hebrews, the second chapter, verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Are you listening? Are you allowing God's word today to slip? We can't afford to be having any slipping of the tongue. Well, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to do that. You let the word of God slip and it won't be long before you'll be slipping and allowing things to slip out, saying things you don't mean to say. The Bible says God has set the wicked in slippery places in the dark. It's one thing to be in the dark, groping, can't see where you're going. But could you imagine if the floor you're walking on in the dark is slippery? Hmm? And just think of this. 
There's no walls. There's no support to hold yourself up on. You're just slipping all over the place in the dark. And the world calls that progress. Fear God. The world today is so confused, so mixed up to the degree that evil is being called good and good is being called evil. Let that sink in, brothers and sisters. Good is being called evil. And evil is being called good. Hey, man, the world is crazy, insane, and everybody is an authority, it seems. Everybody wants to be chief. Everybody wants to be the know-it-all. You can't tell me anything. Amen. You can't teach me anything, Brother Joseph. Uh, Folks, I don't have to know you personally to discern that there is a resistance out there. Amen. I don't need to know you. I don't need to see your comments to know there's a resistance to the truth. The truth today is being resisted. Of course it's being resisted by the world, but I'm not talking about the world. The truth is being resisted by God's people. You talk to most people in the church today about the hundredfold harvest. You talk to them about perfection. You talk to them about the separation of the bride and the church. You quickly become their enemy. They'll turn on you. They'll start looking at you like you got to be, you got to be of the devil. Anybody listening? They call evil good and good evil right in the church today. Did you know Nineveh got so bad that they couldn't even discern their right hand from their left hand spiritually? Morally. They couldn't discern between good and evil. And the church today is getting in that place. Getting so convoluted. And I'm going to tell you one of the greatest things today that is really adding leaven to the church. And that's politics. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You want to talk about leaven? You want to talk about hypocrisy? You want to talk about arrogance and pride? Politics. Get some politics in your life. It won't be long before you'll be an enemy of righteousness. Amen. I'm going to tell you, you can't be in politics and serve the Lord Jesus Christ at the same time. No way. Impossible. He's not of this world. Amen. His kingdom's not of this world. Amen, people. 
That's why he says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing. When you start making excuses and you start compromising with your own discernment of right and wrong and good and evil because you think a certain leader is better than another leader as far as president of the United States, You become a judge of evil thoughts. We need to come out of that whole thing, people. You're not going to have any peace in Christ Jesus if you're involved in politics. That's the truth. What, what could be more of a care in this life that's hindering you from becoming perfect, reaching perfection. What could be more of a hindrance? What could be more of a distraction than politics? Amen. Christians today calling unfaithful men unfaithful to their own wives, unfaithful men A Christian. Well, they might be the president of the United States, but they're not a Christian. Amen. Ye must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Just because you tag yourself as a Christian, just because you take your little bit of wine and your little wafer, you feel cleansed, doesn't make you a Christian, doesn't make you clean in the eyes of God, because you've done something you think has made your conscience clean. It doesn't work, people. There's only one thing that can wash away the stain of sin, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sin? Nothing. Nothing. But. Thank God. But. The blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for Calvary. What Jesus did at Calvary. Thank God for the cross. Not the tree hung on. The Christ that hung on the tree. Thank God. Thank God. For eternal life. But how shall we escape? I'm not talking about just being saved or even being raptured. How shall we escape, vanish, if we neglect so great a salvation? Hmm? How shall we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect? That word neglect has to do with hesitation. How shall we escape if we hesitate? If we neglect so great salvation? That's why the church is not going to escape. Not until the middle of the tribulation hour. Because they are neglecting. Because they are hesitating. 
You know, if you have gasoline and your vehicle starts hesitating, something's wrong with the gasoline. It's usually water in the gas. Amen? Something is in. your experience if you're hesitating today. Do you know it won't be long if you're hesitating before you will be double-minded? Amen. There's only one direction that the believer in Christ should be going, and that's forward. Oh, but Brother Joseph, there's a Red Sea in front of us. That's nothing for God. He removes obstacles. He didn't tell you and I to go to the right and left. He didn't tell us to go backwards. He said, go forward. He'll take care of the rest. You just go forward. Amen, people. Moses cried out to God, what should we do? What should I do to people? They're getting angry. Well, Moses, didn't I tell you to go forward? But, but, but. That obstacle, Brother Joseph, you just don't understand. That problem, it's in my way. Go forward. Go forward. You know that rod that was in the hand of Moses? That represented the will of God. If you're in the will of God and you're going forward, Jesus says, Behold, I've set before you an open door no man can shut. If you're in the will of God and you're going forward, you're unstoppable. You didn't hear what I just said. You are unstoppable. Now, the devil will try to hinder you as he tried to hinder Paul the Apostle, but he can't stop you. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You're going to be tested. But if you will be faithful, if you'll continue to move forward in the will of God, you will watch the miracles of God before your eyes unfold. One right after another, just as they did. Now, if you start murmuring and complaining as they did, it won't be long before God will bring you into a bitter experience, just as he did Israel, to reveal to you your own bitterness. Are you listening? You start murmuring and complaining? God just worked a miracle for you, just... just just behind you. It's just a little ways down the road behind you, but you forgot about it. Israel forgot about the parting of the Red Sea. They forgot about the deliverance God wrought for them in Egypt. And now they're murmuring and complaining, this God that just parted the Red Sea, he can't provide a table for you in the wilderness. He can't supply for you food and water. God forbid that his people murmur and complain against God in this hour because you've been brought into a bitter experience as a mirror so you can see your own bitterness. 
so you can see why you're murmuring and complaining. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you been brought into a bitter experience lately? God brought the people to the bitter waters, Mara. Anybody listening? They couldn't drink the water. It was so bitter. Amen. I want you to understand, people. God will bring you to the bitter waters. And he'll have you drink that water as long as it takes to get you to see yourself. How long is it going to take before God's people are going to be honest about what they see? Because the latest in church are not honest. They say they're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. But they're not being honest. Because Jesus, who is the truth, who is the ultimate mirror, is saying to them, you're wretched, you're poor, you're blind, you're miserable, and you're naked, and you don't even know it. That's what the mirror is saying today. You know, the counterfeit is mirror, mirror on the wall. Hmm? Jesus is the mirror. We look into that mirror of his glory in his face. And if we're honest with what he reveals to us, listen to me, we're changed. Oh, Brother Joseph, I didn't realize it was that easy. Oh, yeah. It's only painful when you're dishonest. Are you listening, people? As soon as God reveals to you who you really are, and you admit it when, you, when he shows it to you, you agree with him, you're changed. From faith to faith, glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, you're being changed. That's why he says the good and honest heart produced a hundredfold. God just looking for us to be honest, folks. He's looking for honesty. Amen. It's easy to see the faults in others. What about the faults in you? Oh, yeah, we always do it, right? We always see the faults in others. But we never see the faults in ourselves. And only those that do see the fault in themselves. and are honest about it, they're the only ones that are going to be changed. Amen. Praise God. The law could not change us because our flesh is weak, folks. But through Jesus Christ, we can be changed, transformed, if we'll just be honest when we look into his word, look into his face, when we look into the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen? When the Pharisees looked at Jesus, they got angry. They wanted to kill him because what they saw. Amen. I may know it was what Jesus said with his words and just being in the presence of evil 
being the light, he exposed what was in darkness. He didn't even have to open his mouth. He could walk into darkness and corruption. And all those around him that were in corruption, those that were part of corruption, he was shining. He was shining. Amen? And he didn't have to say a word. And they were convicted. Amen. Now, Jesus didn't just say, or just uh, bend down and start writing in the sand. He said something. It wasn't altogether Jesus writing in the sand that made those that walked away convicted. It was what he said. You, or he that is without sin, cast the first stone. It was his word that brought the conviction. Listen to me, but he didn't have to say a word. Just him standing there would have been enough. He is the word, people. The truth. He's the mirror. Amen. And when he reveals to you the truth about yourself, you ought to be honest. If you'd be honest, he would change you. He would transform. Praise God. There's a song. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Don't let me be the same. Or I want to be more like you. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Is that the cry of your heart today? How shall we escape if we neglect, hesitate to be honest, hesitate at the mirror? How shall we escape if we're dishonest with what we see? God bless you.